shaking his head at all the wrong things people were doing down on Earth. Oh man, this isn't quite what I had in mind when I created Earth. I feel so far away from my kids down there. Why? It's just hard to be friends with people when you don't like what they're doing. I think it's time. Time for what, Lord? Time for us to step in. Shall we read as a army, Lord? Take you single lesson? No, I don't think we should send an army. Maybe just one person. What person? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! Lord, if we're sending just one person, love to be someone very powerful and very strong. Because there's tons of people down there. No, they don't have to be strong. They'll be going as a newborn baby. A newborn baby? baby? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! Lord, this plan is rather risky. A newborn human baby is small and weak. This baby must be born to people who will protect him. Maybe a great ruler or mighty king? Actually, I was thinking I could send him to a young peasant girl whose heart is beautiful and full of courage. Ah! planning to take Earth by surprise. No one will be expecting a newborn baby born to a humble villager. But what good can a baby do? This will not just be any baby. I'm sending in the Prince of Heaven in disguise. The Prince of Heaven? Our Prince? Your son? Please, I won't be expecting that. Lord, this is too risky. Sending the prince in disguise as a tiny baby, born not to kings, but to humble villagers. Surely our prince cannot be born in a cottage. He must be born in a palace. You're right. He shouldn't be born in a cottage. Phew. He'll be born in a stable. A stable surrounded by animals who with hay, filled with poo. Brilliant. They won't be expecting that. Lord, how will all the people know he's there? What if they don't notice? Those who are looking will find him, and his mission will bring all people closer to me, even if they do something really wrong. When the prince is done, nothing will get between them and my love. Can we leave some clues for the people looking? Like in the stars? Clues in the stars? Sure, why not? We can make one huge one that points to him. looked at their hopeful faces and his heart was touched by their love for the fence. All right, you can sing. Yay! But not in front of the whole world. That would just be weird. And no kings or rulers. How about we sing for some shepherds? That's a lonely job. Those blokes could do us some cheering up. Brilliant. They won't be expecting that. You know the rest of the story. An angel visited a humble girl with a courageous heart and told her the good news. She will have a baby and he will be the Prince of Heaven who would help Earth to be close to God again. As planned, the baby was born in a stable about as far from a palace as you can get. A group of wise men noticed some strange clues in the stars. They packed their balloons and followed the star right to a baby. And of course, a bunch of lonely shepherds were guiding their sheep when all of a sudden the sky was lit up by a thousand of angels singing. Nobody would ever speak that. Good morning and Merry Christmas.
Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's sing together. Joy to the world.
I don't know about you, but I'm excited to celebrate the birth of our Savior this morning. Amen? amen. Come on, amen, church. Man, awesome day. You may be seated. You may be seated. Well, welcome, Trinity. We are so excited to have you here this morning on this Christmas Eve service. So great to see everybody this morning. We want to welcome um, those of you that are watching online as well. We just know that we love you. We miss you. We wish you were here with us here this morning on this wonderful day. Well, Matt, man, it's great, great to see you up here this morning. Yeah, it's very exciting to be here this morning. It is Christmas Eve. Man. And what an awesome place to be. No other place I'd rather be than in church. Amen. You know Pastor what? In Matt. fact, let's gather back here tomorrow morning on the day that, you yes. know, it's all about. C can yeah. we wear our jammies? Sure. Okay, sure. that sounds good. Uh, hey, well, we're, we're excited to be here. Normally, we're in the kids' church area yeah. on Sunday mornings. Uh, just thank you for letting us be a part of this service today. It is so exciting to be here with moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. My whole family is over here and over here and everywhere. And we're all so right. Excited. Thanks, fellas. Give it up for these guys. RJ. Pastor Matt, they do an awesome job with our youth and our children every week. Speaking of children, we're going to read the Christmas story to the kids, and we need their help today. So everybody, every kid here that's uh, fifth grade and younger, carefully, we need you to come this way. We, you can wear your glasses, just don't crash. Uh, parents, if they're real little and you want to come with them, staff that's helping me with this, come quickly and help out because we don't want any accidents. You can sit all around on the, ste on the steps here. All the kids sitting around on the steps or on these altar areas here. So we're going to read you the Christmas story. You guys are going to help me read the Christmas story today. I'm so excited. Come on, give it up for our kids, huh? Give them a big hand. Look at all these kids. They're awesome. They are awesome. All right. Where's Jen and Mandy at? Jen and Mandy. Jen and Mandy, I need you to grab a section of kids. Okay. And these kids, who do you got? Show me who you got. All right. You guys right there, every time I say the name Mary, you're going to go, it's real important. Oh, isn't he cute? Okay, let's practice that. Mary. All right. And my next section is Skip and Faye. We're Skip and Faye right here. All right, you guys are the baby Jesus. All right, your section is baby Jesus section. Who's baby Jesus? Raise your hands. All right. Right, right here with Skip and Faye. Every time I say the name Jesus, you guys are going to go, wah, wah. Okay? And if we need help, just everybody join in if you remember this. All right, I got shepherds right here in the middle. I got Matt and RJ as shepherds right here. I know I can count on you guys. You guys in the middle, you are the shepherds. And whenever I say shepherds, you're going to say, very important, ready? We watch the sheep. Okay? Shepherds. Let's try it one more time. Shepherds. We watch the sheep. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Over here, speaking of sheep, we got the cows and sheep section. That is Matt and Heather Springer. Are you ready, Matt and Heather? All right. So every time I say cows or sheep, you're going to do what cows and sheep do. You're either going to go moo or ba. All right. So cows and sheep, go. All right. We got a bunch of sick sheep here. This morning. All right? And we got one more. We got some angels down here on the end. We got some angels with Miss Sonia and Miss Amber down here on the end. And every time I say angels, you guys are going to go, ha! All right? So, angels. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty Let's try it down the line one more time. Mary. Baby Jesus. That's uh, good. Shepherds. We watch the sheep. Oh, that's awesome. Cows and sheep. And yeah, we got a good sheep right up here on top, man. All right. And angels. All right. If you want to join in, feel free as we do the Christmas story together. Is everybody ready? 
Listen for your words. At that time, Caesar Augustus sent out an order to all the people in all the countries into the Roman rule. And the order said that all people must write their name in a book to be taxed. And this was the first registration. And it happened while Quirinius, that's a weird name, was governor of Syria. And all the people traveled to their towns to be taxed. So Joseph left Nazareth, a town in Galilee, and he went to the Bethlehem of Judea. And the town was known as the town of David. And Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Get ready. And Joseph registered with Mary because she was engaged to marry him. Now, Mary was now pregnant. While Joseph and Mary were we're wearing poor Mary out this morning. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have a baby. (laughs) And she gave birth to her firstborn son, Jesus. And there was not enough room for them in the house. So Mary wrapped the baby with pieces of cloth and laid the baby in a box where cattle are fed. And that night, some shepherds were in the fields watching their sheep. And an angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds and the glory of the Lord was shining around them. And the shepherds became very afraid. And the angel (laughs) said to them, don't be afraid. You can see why they were scared. (laughs) I have some very good news for you, and it will make all the people very happy. Today, your Savior was born in David's town. He's Christ the Lord. And this is how you will know him. You will find a baby. Wrapped in pieces of cloth and lying in a feeding box. And then a very large group of angels. All right, you guys are going to have to help the angels out from here on out, all right? From heaven, join the first angel. And all the angels were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to all men. And the angels left the shepherds and went back to heaven. And the shepherds said to each other, we will go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened and we will see this thing the Lord God has told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby Lying in a manger. Isn't that a great story? Didn't they do great, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. You guys can go back to your mommies and daddies in your seats. Yeah. Give them a big hand today. They were fabulous. Look for your kids. We don't want any kids to go home to the wrong home today. It's great to be. Just look around you this morning. Take some mental snapshots today. You're in church on Christmas Eve. It doesn't get much better than that. And we're going to sing some more carols together today. I need all those manly men to join me and Josh on this next one. Are you ready, guys? Can I get some guy stuff going in this room today? All right. Ready, guys? Come on. Here we go. God 
rest ye merry gentlemen let nothing you dismay remember christ our savior was born on christmas day to save us all from satan's power when we were gone astray oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy oh tidings of comfort and joy let me hear it for the guys huh one more verse from god our heavenly father a blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same how that in bethlehem was born the son of god by name oh tidings of comfort and joy comfort and joy in my 
Thank you, Lord, for coming for us at Christmas time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you loved us so much that you could not leave us alone. You entered into this world on that silent night so many years ago to prove to us the love of God. And we're so grateful today, so grateful to be in this place with our friends and family. Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are going to prepare to receive our tithes and offerings today. Thank you for being so faithful to give throughout the year. And as the ushers come, uh, we're going to show you a, a short video of some of the things that we accomplished together during us this month of Christmas giving. So watch this video, and then Tammy Rodriguez is going to come and sing the offertory for us. Let's pray over the offering. God bless this time of offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As four rides off in the sunset, I sweep the snow from my doorstep. I just get up but stop and grin. It's like I'm Like it came on a midnight clear It's all love this season is a gift When love came down and let us live Let's open up and let our hearts embrace this moment For Christmas this year We're gonna make a sound, gonna make it loud For Christmas this year We're gonna make some noise, let the world rejoice For Christmas this year For Christmas, for Christmas this year The sunrise, I sneak downstairs, the sparkle in eyes, and oh, what joy it brings to me. The family around our Christmas tree, and I thank the Lord for his favor as we sing the songs of the Savior, our Savior. Chase me 
shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. Thank you, Tammy. It's great to have her home, as well as many of you that have come home for Christmas. That's what we started the service with today. I'll be home for Christmas. How many of you are visiting and home for Christmas? So raise your hands and wave at us out there. It's great to have you home in West Virginia. A song about that somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's great to be together today. We are going to finish up our Christmas series, among other things, this morning. It's been a great series, and so once more, just let me say to all of you a very Merry Christmas. Last year at this time, we were in Pennsylvania, and Pastor Tommy and some of the staff were doing our first live stream service at Christmas, and this year it's our privilege and pleasure to be with you for our first Christmas on Christmas Eve, no less, and what a thrill it is. Thank you on behalf of Sonia and I for a tremendous year of uh, ministry here, our first year with you at Fairmont. Awesome. Our series has been Our Coming Savior. We've uh, talked about the Christmas story in some different angles. We started off by meeting kind of the villain of the story, not kind of, he was, Herod, the king who hated Christmas, tried to kill Christmas, tried to rub out Christ before he could even live for very long, killing all the children two years and under because he was jealous and afraid of the newborn king of the Jews. And then we talked about Joseph and Mary whose story seemed so sweet and innocent and perfect that night at the manger. But man, if you could rewind four or five months, it was tough when Joseph heard his fiancée 
who was pledged to him to be married come and say, Joseph, I'm pregnant, and the baby's not yours. And it was an angel, and he had to be going, what? And it was a difficult moment for him, but God worked it all out just in time. We found out through that one that sometimes miracles hide. Sometimes in the midst of the most difficult times, God is up to something amazing. And then last week we looked at the shepherds and a message about dealing with your fears. If you miss any of these, go online and catch some of them. It's been a great series. Today we close the series with a message about the innkeeper, the, the, that guy who came, was there that night when Joseph and Mary came, knocking on his door, looking for a place to stay. And so, I'll just have a little bit of fun with you before we get into this one. thought it might be fun to do a, a couple of knock-knock jokes. <laughs> Christmas knock-knock jokes. Are you up for that? Yeah. All right? Because these are kids' Christmas knock-knock jokes. All right? So, here we go. Knock, knock. Honda. Honda, first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Should I keep going? Uh, knock, knock. Irish. Irish, you a Merry Christmas. Irish, you a Merry Christmas. Irish, you a Merry Christmas. I'm getting thumbs down from the Fancher boys over here. I can't, can't believe it. Knock, knock. Ivana. Ivana, wish you a Merry Christmas. Ivana, wish you a Merry Christmas. Ivana, wish you a Merry Christmas. Knock, knock. Ho, ho. Man, your impression of Santa needs a little work. I like this next one, written by kids. Knock, knock. Centipede. Centipede on the Christmas tree. Fancher boys giving me thumbs up. I got three thumbs up on the centipede, man. All right. Uh, knock, knock. Lettuce. Lettuce in. It's cold outside. That's probably what Joseph and Mary were saying that night. And one more they might have been saying, the last one. Knock, knock. Elf. Elf, I knock again, will you let me in? Maybe that's what Joseph and Mary were saying that night. I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In the time that Caesar Augustus uh, issued a decree from a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And this was the first census to take place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. And so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Judea to Bethlehem to the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. And he went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And when they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And they wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Imagine that. The Christ child here, no room. Let's watch a video clip that might portray it. I'm all booked up, sorry. We don't need much. What part of I'm all booked up did you not understand? I have no room for you in my inn. Please. We've been walking for days. Do you think you were the first person to pound on my door at this hour of the night looking for a room? There has to be something. A, a closet, perhaps. You can keep asking the same question. I'm going to give you the same answer. Joseph. Why, what are you doing up? You need to rest now. We won't be any trouble. And I'll pay you whatever you want. Please. 
I'm, I'm sorry. No vacancies. Give me a minute. We have no idea what it was really like on that night, and Luke doesn't even mention an innkeeper or a conversation between an innkeeper and Joseph and Mary. We can assume that since there was an inn, there had to be an innkeeper, and whoever he was, when the earthly parents of the Son of God, think about this, when the earthly parents of the Son of God knocked on his door, the innkeeper sent them away. Now, maybe he helped them like we see here in the video, and maybe he didn't. Maybe it was somebody completely different that finally found them a place in the manger that night. If he sent them packing, you can't really blame the innkeeper. You and I, we might have done the same thing. After all, there were thousands and thousands of people in town to register for this census. And they all had the same problem. All the rooms were full no vacancy signs everywhere. But he turned down Jesus, you're saying today. He didn't know. Unlike the shepherds, the innkeeper did not get to hear the angels sing out on the hillside, unto you is born, unto you is born this day in the city of David, Bethlehem, a Savior. But he turned away a woman who was nine months pregnant and ready to give birth. I mean, Mary's ready to pop, right? Not his problem. But he potentially missed the chance of a lifetime. You might talk about a marketing op, right? I mean, he could have posted on his sign for generations to come, the Messiah was born here, right? All the tourists... Coming through there, the Christ child was born here in this inn. Can you imagine if we could like interview the innkeeper, like even now, wherever he's at. Can you imagine if we could stick a mic in his face years later, knowing what we know now about who it was that was born that night, who it was that knocked on his door. Here's three great questions that I think it would be good to ask the innkeeper. Here's the first one. If you had known who it was that knocked on your door, would it have made any difference? The Son of God, would you have found some place if you had known it was God come down to earth? Here's another great one. If you had known how far they had come and how difficult their journey had been, would you have found room? Because I did some research and, and Joseph and Mary traveled over 90 miles through the Judean desert, it would have taken them at least nine days. She's nine months pregnant. It was during the winter. The temperatures during the day were in the 30s. It was the rainy season. It was constantly raining and snowing on them. It would get freezing at night. There was one stretch of the journey that went through a really dangerous forest known for lions and bears and wild boars. There were pirates and robbers. It was a long, miserable trip in the snow and the rain. And after all that, I'm sorry. There's no place for you. Question number three. Mr. Innkeeper, if you just understood that it could have changed your life and your family's lives for generations to come. Would you have made room for Jesus that night? Your inn, sir, would have been famous. Tourists would have visited 
forever. I mean, you could have paid your kid's college tuition off and then some. You could have retired early with the money you made off of this. It could have changed your family. For You could have bought a beach house, beachfront property and had it made. Should we feel bad for the innkeeper? I mean, should we think of him as some cold-hearted, incompassionate man? Why are we even talking about him on Christmas Eve Sunday? What does he have to do with Christmas and with us? And I would say everything. Because, listen, we're all innkeepers on Christmas. We're all innkeepers, and Jesus is still looking for a place to stay. In fact, in Revelation 3.20, this is Jesus talking. Now, not the baby in the manger version. This is Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, grown up, seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And listen what he says. Listen, I am standing and knocking at your door. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will eat together. So Jesus is still, 2,000 years later, he's still looking for a place to stay. This is why Jesus came at Christmas time. So all of us, every person in the world would have a chance to let him in. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but could have everlasting life. There it is. God look at, sent his son to find a place to stay. We are the personal innkeepers of our house. We decide whether Jesus can come in or whether we will send him away. Now don't miss this. This is huge. It's Christmas Eve, and Jesus is looking for a place to stay. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Have you let him in? Will you, at some point in your life, on a day, on a morning like today, will you let him in when he knocks? Because there will come a day when you will meet him. Face to face, not the baby in a manger, the grown up King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You will meet him because this is not a fairy tale. This is a real story. Jesus Christ came and lived and died, and there's historical records of it, and he changed the world. Your eternity is at stake based on what you do with Jesus. So I feel compelled to ask you the three innkeeper questions while you still have the opportunity to let Jesus into your life. Because I want you to imagine what it would be like out in eternity if you turned him down and someone in the future were to ask you about turning away Jesus. Question number one. If you had known, if you had known on that Christmas Eve Sunday morning, if you had known who it was that knocked on your door, would it have made any difference? But you know, because I just told you. I mean, someone else has probably told you that this baby wasn't any normal baby. This was God come down in the flesh, grew up, a perfect, sinless life to lay down his life for us. He told you, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and life, and I knock, and if you'll let me in, I'll come in. He knocked, and you knew he was there, but you didn't let him in. Question number two. If you knew just how far he had come and how difficult his journey had been, would you have made room for Jesus? Imagine being asked this out in eternity. If you just knew how far he came to get to you and how hard his journey would have been. Joseph and Mary traveled 90 miles through all those difficult circumstances and the elements and the robbers and the threat of lions and bears and etc. But listen, Jesus crossed galaxies to get to you. God, who was timeless, entered into time to get to you. He became a man 
And he put on flesh so he could feel your pain. He could know what it's like to walk in your shoes. And on the last leg of his journey on earth, man, he was betrayed. He was tortured. He was crucified. And although you and I cannot begin to understand just how far he came and how hard it was for him to get to you, we know his story. How would it feel to say, I knew, I knew he came a long way. I didn't understand it all, but I knew he came from heaven all the way across time and eternity and the galaxies to get to me. I knew he suffered and bled and died. I knew it was really hard on him, but I turned him away. One more question. As the innkeeper of your soul, imagine being asked this question somewhere out there in eternity. If you knew that it would have changed your life and your family's lives for generations to come, wouldn't you have made room for Jesus? Now think about this. There's so much at stake when Jesus knocks. There's so much on the line when Jesus knocks. And it's not just about you. It's about everyone that you influence, whether you open that door or not. It's about everyone that you love. For instance, when a man lets Jesus in, the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new person, and the old passes away, and everything becomes new. When a man lets Jesus in, he becomes new and he's changed from the inside out and his sin is washed away and his past is forgiven. Maybe that man was an alcoholic or a drug addict or maybe he had a dangerous temper. But because he let Jesus in, this imaginary man got his sin issues under control. And he marries a lady who also knows Jesus. And they have kids. And their kids, they tell their kids the story of the day that Jesus knocked and he came into daddy's heart and how he changed his life. I could have been an alcoholic. I could have been a drug addict, kids, but Jesus saved me. I'm so thankful. And they tell their kids and their kids tell their kids, their grandkids, and their kids tell their kids, their grandkids. And listen, in eternity, that man will one day gather with generations of his family members who will all be there because one one day he let Jesus in when he heard him knocking on the door of his heart. Generations. Now, imagine what that interview would be like in eternity for that man if he had turned Jesus away. Not just him that was affected, but generations. To come, You see, because when Jesus knocks, it's not just about you, although that's enough reason. It's about everyone that you influence. It's about everyone that will gather around the Christmas tree with you tomorrow. It's about everyone that will sit around the Christmas table with you tomorrow. If you let Jesus in, it could change for everyone you love forever. What? A Christmas legacy that would be. I'm talking to all the innkeepers today. Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, knocks on your door. He came so far and he went through so much to get to you. And if you let him in, he will not only change your life, he can change the lives of everybody that loves you. Everybody that you influence for generations to come. Would you bow your heads with me on this Christmas Eve, Sunday morning? What a privilege to preach the Word of God, to talk about this innkeeper that we've never met, but I'm sitting in a room. I'm standing in a room full of innkeepers that I have met. Some of you I've not. But Jesus stands, and He knocks on the door of your heart on Christmas Eve and he says I came a long ways just to get to you I came a long ways to save you I came so far and I went through so much so you could know me so your sins could be forgiven so heaven could be your home so what do you say 
Is there room in your heart for me? I don't care how messy things have been. I don't care how many things wrong you've done. Today is a great day to let me in. And I could change your life. And I could fix your family. And I could impact those that will come long after you. And one day you'll gather with all your family members in heaven because on a Christmas Eve Sunday you let me in. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It's a private moment for you. Jesus, Christmas Eve. You see, I've never done that before. I've never prayed a prayer with my voice, with my heart, from my heart. I've never said, Jesus, come in. You came so far. Come in. I know who you are. I've heard how much I need you. Come in and rescue me. Save me. Heads are bowed and you're thinking about it. And it longs for a response, this knock at your door. If you'd say, not to me, but to Jesus, Jesus, come on in. I feel you. I hear you knocking today. Come on into my life. If that's you, would you raise your hand right now? Anybody as I look across this room? On this day, God bless you. God bless you right here in the middle. Two or three hands that I've seen all right. Anybody, God bless you over here to my left today. Anybody else that would say, yes, Jesus, come in. Come in. on. It's Christmas time. Come in. God bless you, ma'am. I see your hand there. You can put it down. Anybody else? I've seen three or four hands that are raised. God bless you, young man. That is so awesome. Jesus loves you. Jesus is in this place. To God bless you over here to my left uh, section and God bless some of you kids over here today anybody else because we're going to pray and then we're going to sing and we're going to go home anybody else God bless you young man a couple of guys right here in the middle raising their hands saying Jesus come in Jesus come in I see your hand praise the Lord would you stand with me and would you pray out loud all across this room and if you raise your hand I'd love to meet you I'd love for some of our staff to meet you afterwards today I know it's a busy day but we're ending early and, and we'd love to talk to you more about the decision you've made but would you pray this prayer with me everybody in the room right now as if it were your first time to invite Jesus to come in pray this prayer dear Jesus you came a long way for me you worked so hard to get to me, to give me this chance to know you and to be forgiven. And on this Christmas Eve, I open the door of my heart and I say, Jesus, come in. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my Lord, be my friend from this moment on, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing it together, oh come, oh come.
worship you today, Jesus. We thank you for coming into this hurting world so that we might have a Savior, so that we could be forgiven. We thank you for friends and family. We thank you for the many hands that were raised today to say, Jesus, I welcome you. I will not turn you away. Come into my life. Oh, God, our prayer today is that their lives from this moment on will be forever changed because of Jesus. And we pray that every home that's represented here today, no matter how difficult the circumstances might be, come on, if you need help in your home at Christmas time, ask Jesus for help right now before we leave. God, if there's any home that's struggling today, if there's any marriage that's broken, God, if there are any people whose hearts are wounded, we pray that they would dare to let you in. Let the unforgiveness and the pain go. Let healing and peace come to their home at this Christmas. I pray your blessings on everyone as they go. Today, give them a blessed, amazing, memorable Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas. If you accepted Christ, we'd love to meet you in person. Hug somebody's neck. Tell somebody Merry Christmas. It's your Christmas family all around you today.